Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to use a, um, a stamp set from Lawn Fawn called Hey There. So that's for all these little critters and I'm going to use some oxide inks to like paint them. But this paper wasn't actually the right paper for this. <laughs> so this is just Nina um, cardstock. So it, it it sort of works, but not really. It's not made for watercoloring. So in hindsight, I probably should have used actual watercolor paper. But I think initially I was thinking I was going to use um, some coping markers or pencils or something like that. So that's why I'd stamped them on this, uh, this cardstock in particular. But anyway, I just changed my mind. I thought well, maybe the oxides being sort of part pigment and part dye ink, they would work quite well with this. And it works okay. Um, they've got a different sort of look to them. Uh, and it's, it's not horrendous, but it's, <laughs> it's one of those moments of like, right, you should have used the right paper. <laughs> I should have thought about it a little bit before I actually went along and painted everything. But like I say, it works out okay. And also what I'm going to do in a minute, um, once I've done all the colouring in, as so to speak, or the painting, is I'm going to use a die set from Honeybee Stamps. Now, I don't know where I've been that I have not used or even looked at buying Honeybee Stamps or dies or any of their, their product. Um, I've watched that I'm subscribed to them on YouTube. I watch their, you know, their videos and, and I look at all their products, but I just don't know, just never, ever thought to buy them. Um, so, yeah, not sure why. Uh, clearly li living in the dark ages here, but you'll see it's so cool and I am completely obsessed with them as well now. <laughs> so <laughs> anything where I can create or build up a scene of some description, I, I love those sort of things. So yeah, so not sure where I was in the dark ages clearly. So again, just carrying on and um, using those colors that I showed you in the oxide um, inks. I just used the the little um, like the sheet that I've put. It's like a non-stick sheet that actually comes with your um, Tim Holtz uh, glass mat, media mat. Um, you, I left it on the sheet. It came on that it's sort of clung to. It's like a like an acetate sheet sort of thing. Um, I left it on there just so I could move it out of the way because I was making a, a video here. But I'm just using that as like a palette almost. So you could use an acrylic block with some white. Um, cardstock or like a copy paper underneath so you can see the colors you can use a, a white tile um, that would work really well as well so it's just a, a non-porous surface that you can then use as a paint palette if you don't have a, a you know an actual paint palette if that makes any sense um, and again I'm just using a variety of colors there to color or you know these images in also you'll notice I have a female and a male adult chicken <laughs> so all i did was i took the adult one which has got the little spiky things i think it's called the crown <laughs> on top of him that's what comes in the stamp set from lawn fawn but what i did was i just used some washi tape and only stamped um only inked up the rest of the chicken so that it, it looks like i have a female and a male um so when you look at images have a look for things like that if you need like a female and a male version um something like chickens you know when they got the crown on them i believe they're the male roosters whereas without it they're mostly the females so um so that's how i sort of made it so that i have like a mum and a dad <laughs> kind of thing and then all the babies and the eggs um so again just just making my way through all those images which i then cut out with my scan and cut so now i've got some crackling uh, well, three different colors here. Crackling campfire, is that what it's called? <laughs> um, some wild honey and there is another color there. I'm so sorry. This is actual watercolor paper. Um, and I just, as you saw, stamped or sort of smushed, technical term, smushed the pad onto this non, this mat that I actually used for the other um, painting of the images. Uh, smushed it on there. And I then spritz that with water what i should have done is spritz the cardstock as well um, because as you can see i landed up initially with those square i could see the square of the of the ink pad which i can't bear i hate things like that so 
I should have actually spritzed the piece of cardstock with water as well as spritzing the ink itself and that will give you a more fluid version of and movement of that ink. So all I'm doing here for the next couple minutes maybe, <laughs> I can't remember how long this bit goes on for, is I'm just creating layers and layers and layers. And so you'll see in a second I will clear off what's there because eventually the colors mix too much and it just becomes one color or depending on the color combination that you've got you land up with a with like a mud version <laughs> so if you like that that's great but I didn't want that I wanted to create this really cool orangey yellowy background so every now and again I'll just clean it off with a baby wipe um, and then dry the mat off and then I add those colors back in um, and depending on which color I thought I needed more of, um, I would add maybe more of that. So you'll see in a bit, I'll sort of maybe add more of the yellow one, or yeah, which I think is the wild honey was the yellower color. Um, you know, and just add more of that particular color so that I get more of that onto. And because they're oxides, they tend to layer. So even though like the normal distressings will layer quite nicely if you dry in between each layer as such. Um, the oxides, because they're part pigment, part dye ink, they also have this great ability to layer up really nicely. So, um, but in a different way, it's got like a different look. It's almost like a chalky kind of look um, and very much a more uh, or a less transparent, translucent kind of look to it. So I find it, I find them really interesting to um, to work with. So again, I'm going back to, um, you know, more ink and more water spritzing and then layering again and again. So we'll keep going with that and drying in between. So this is just a, a heated up. No, what's it called? I think it's called a heated up tool. <laughs> is, that a, is that what it's called? It's the Ranger tool anyway <laughs> for heating up your um, your, uh, what am I trying to say? For heating up or drying, um, it's very hot, but it does dry, um, it's slower in the way that it comes out. So it's not like a regular um, heat tool. And then once I dried that and I was happy with the colors, I still spritzed with water to get that sort of reaction because it will always react. It's, it's the whole point of distressing, so they will always, always react. So I did that so that I could get more texture in the background. I just needed more of that sort of the whole, you know, that whole texture thing that we get from from these inks. So I did that and then I spritzed again. So the first time I just dried, which gives you one look, and then I'm going to this time I'm, I've spritzed and I'm going to lift that ink. Now, because I've covered enough of that piece of card, there's no um, it's not going to drag it up so much that this it's going to react and have that white look to it but it will pick up enough that when it's you're more close up you can see that it's got more texture in the background which is what i wanted i just wanted lots of texture in case i've not said that enough in this video already <laughs> so so yeah and i think this card worked out at about uh i want to say it's it's either like five and a half by six or five by four Five, five by six or something, something like that. It was a funny shape card. It wasn't my normal shape, but I kind of wing that these days. I just sort of work with what I've got. So I'm going to use some vintage photo and some antique linen on the um, different layers for the die set. So this is the Honeybee Stamps Barn, Barn Builder set. I think that's what it's called. Um, and it it's got tons and tons of different images in here so you've got but everything for a barn right so you've got the little like top i don't know what they're called but in the top section it's kind of like a window but not where you might have some things sticking out you've got bundles of hay you've got little fences you've got the barn doors and two different layers for the barn doors um the barn itself another roof lining of the of the roof of the barn so that it sort of defines that a bit more so there's everything's included in this and it just creates this cool <laughs> barn so so even down to this little thing where you know you can add some extra hay in there and it's got a little hay 
die that you can die cut which you'll see in a minute so all the colored pieces i used the uh, vintage photo um, just to define them a bit more and to get that sort of especially on the the like windmill thing it just gives it a bit more of that rustic old-fashioned sort of thing going on and then on the white pieces i will use the antique linen because again i don't necessarily want them bright white um, in this case i just wanted that sort of slightly grungy looking barn i didn't want it to be all pure white or anything like that so just cleaning up on that color and then antique linen like i say for these pieces and these are the little pieces that are going to create um like the door the barn door that sort of thing so again just a bit of cleaning up and now we we'll start to put these things together so i'm just getting the roof bit and i could have done the roof in a different color i could have done the main barn in red as well or the edge of the the like roof lining if you like or the roof section i could have done that in white and then um, colored it in antique linen um but i like the tone on tone tone on tone works and i was having trouble with my glue so <laughs> shocking i think i fixed that now but we'll see <laughs> So just layering up all these little pieces and you can see the images there are all um, sort of cut out and uh, the images themselves sorry are cut out so my cow my chickens and all the little cans and all sorts of stuff so And then in the top section i'm going to put this little bundle of like hay but i'm going to first get my um bundles on so pretty easy i'm just kind of using the one that i haven't got any glue on it to sort of help line up the other one and this is where i'm still having trouble with my glue but you know <laughs> i somewhat make it work for the most part <laughs> And then I'm going to put the top section on there as well. And I'm going to add the hay in there as well. And this is where I start to design and decide where I want to put all the other little elements. So the chickens and the, the and I said the ducks, the chickens and the eggs and the baby chickens and all the other animals so in the top bit where there's like this little nest i'm going to put the chickens and their eggs the, like the female mama chicken mama hen hen that's the word um and she's going to go in there and then i will also add in um and i decided to use tape because and glue dots because my wet adhesive was playing up as you saw so <laughs> and so i'll get those in there and then this is where i'm sort of lining up so do you see why i wanted this sort of sunset sunrise kind of background but i wanted it to have lots of texture which it does and it's very cool i think anyway <laughs> so getting some strong adhesive um on the back of this and then i will stick this to the card base And then I can start to build up all the other elements that go into the whole scenery. Um, I just thought it'd be easier if I get the base, because it's the same size as the front of the card. If I got that stuck on first, then I could um, build up the rest of it as I, as I went. Um, normally, well, sometimes I'll go, I'll do it the other way around, where I'll just do everything on like the main panel and then stick it to a card base. But this time I just thought it made more sense. It's the exact same size. So I figured I may as well just get that stuck down, um, ready to go. And so I'm going to start by putting my barn on there because I've got the main part of the barn ready. 
and so I'll get that on there. Somewhat in the middle-ish. <laughs> and you see how it suddenly comes together? It's so cool. And then the, um, I want to call this a windmill. Is that, what, is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called. We have loads of them. Um, in well in South Africa you have loads of them I, I used to seeing them but obviously this is I guess an American version um, don't see them so much here anymore I don't think, remember seeing them so much but and again just trying to work out where I want to put all these little guys and sometimes it's nice just to lay them out roughly where you want them and then go in and stick things down so um, just depends what you want to do but it, it that's how I would do it and then that way I have a better idea of where I'm going to put things and then I can put them in place with some adhesive so for the and all of these are going to be stuck flat so none of them are going to have that 3d um, no 3d foam or anything like that but you'll see it'll still create this sort of dimensional look even though it's not physically dimensional if that makes sense so there's no 3d foam on these things um, they're just they're stuck flat but they still give you that look of, of dimension and and there's there's so much going on that it's just it makes it really interesting for someone to look at and to sort of you know because there's so many things they can keep going oh this is over here and this is over there and <laughs> all that sort of thing so <laughs> well, at least that's how my brain works so I've got the horse I put him behind the one of the fences as well as the um what we're calling the windmill <laughs> thing <laughs> um and then i've got the cow on in front of the barn um and then i used the one of the um hay bales with the goat on top and then the pig sitting next to it and then again i'm just sort of working out where i'm going to put some of these guys so so i've got the baby chicks and then i've got the um like the rooster that he needs to go somewhere as well i decided in the end that he needs to go up on top of something <laughs> so he i've decided he's sitting on top of the or standing on top of the um, barn door because i'm pretty sure they probably would do that if they could get up there so um he's stuck up there and then i'm going to just pop all the little cans i don't know why but cans always seem to be associated with um goats <laughs> so um, i'm just putting all these cans down the bottom where the goat is because I thought that makes kind of sense and then I have the chicks which I'm just gonna sort of put out and about um, just sort of they're just hanging out and one of them is playing silly and is on top of the fence and then this is where I decided that I couldn't actually fit any more on the front of the card because it was more of a, a squarish card rather than a long card um, otherwise that would be a gigantic card <laughs> so, um, so I decided to use the extra pieces I'm just going to put on the inside of the card with the sheep the sheep just didn't fit I, I basically stamped every image pretty much every every image and stamp set and colored them in and then was going to use them but obviously they um, they were more than I had space for <laughs> so, <laughs> so I decided to put the extra ones on the inside and that works out just fine and then um, I also wasn't sure what I would use the what sentiment I was used but there's so many there's quite a few combos on that stamp set so I figured you could use this for anything really it could be a birthday card it could be a thinking of you card it could be a long time no see card it could be anything really a friendship card whatever but it's um, I, I decided to leave it blank and not put a sentiment on it just yet because I figure there's lots of different things we can use this card for um, so yeah so I decided not to put a sentiment on this in this case I've done that on a few cards recently I don't know why anyway um, I hope you enjoyed this I hope you got some ideas for like creating backgrounds and and experimenting with different color backgrounds so if you want like a sunset background use those colors um, and I can't believe where where have I been with the honeybee stems <laughs> So uh, my new obsession. But until next time, guys, I will see you. Well, I will see you next time. So bye for now. <laughs>